enjoyed it, certainly, and I have been about 35 times to Mongolia and to a number of different deserts in different parts of the world. And this is a very, very interesting place to be just from a academic point of view. There's a lot of experiments laying around that could be done. And, and I think they would have very large importance for local and regional and national and global weather and climate. So it's been, it's been very, very interesting to have all this rain coming in at this time. And certainly you can look at it like, okay, the rocks didn't arrive <laughs> when they were supposed to, or that the gutters and the, the downspouts and the cisterns aren't, aren't in place yet. But, um, but just experiencing this has been, been, been very enlightening about what has to happen in terms of moisture and moisture recycling and holding moisture close to the earth. So what's happening in many parts of the world now is that the vegetative cover has been altered. And that vegetative cover emerged over billions of years. So the idea that you alter what has, what has naturally emerged over billions of years and you alter it, then you have to question like, what is the result of altering this? So once we understand them and reverse the human impacts, then you get a completely different result. And that's what we need now around the world. So I think here, what you have in, in Tahos is this situation. It's not just in Tahos, it's in this entire region. So in the western part of the United States, you have extreme drought, long-term drought, and you have wildfires. You have just really quite extraordinary various impacts and so how can you deal with that and if vast numbers of people can study and understand what to do to change that situation then I think you're in a very good position to mitigate and adapt to climate changes to improve weather and, and reduce extreme weather impacts. And so all of that is kind of what I'm feeling while I'm here. Um, it's not just Tahoe's, but I think Tahoe's is a lovely